All right. Good morning, everyone. My name is Heather Duranja, and I'm with Nutrition Vixen. I've got Zach Freeman, the altar boy, here with us today. We're going to talk a little bit about nutrition and how nutrition played a role in his last fight. So, Zach, say hello to everyone. Hey, everybody. I appreciate you having me on, Heather. No problem. So I'm sure you've had a lot of excitement since your last fight, um, which was at Madison Square Garden for Bellator. Um, uh, pretty, pretty exciting evening. I had the um, luck to be there and witness it firsthand, which was really exciting. Um, so you made a historic record. So tell me a little bit about that. Um, well, uh, mixed martial arts is uh, relatively new to the state of New York. So they've only had uh, competitions for about uh, two years now. Um, but I, I did secure the fastest submission win at Madison Square Garden, which is pretty cool. So we'll see how long I can hold that record. Um, yeah. But I took down one of the top prospects in all MMA. He's uh, Aaron Pico. He's, uh, you know, been wrestling his whole life, been boxing his whole life. So, uh, you know, I'm sure he'll come back and be strong, but uh, that was just my night. All right. Well, you're not new to being a winner. You've done a lot of fighting. Um, I saw something this morning that came up on social media, and I think six years ago today you had a win, your first professional fight. Is that correct? Yep. I have uh, 16 fights um, and 11 professional fights at this point. So, yep. Uh, 2011, I took my first pro fight. Um, I've had a couple injuries and setbacks, but uh, I'm still trying to go strong and, you know, hopefully uh, have some big fight news here in the future. That's exciting. Very exciting. So, th so it's not done after this, huh? You're going to keep going? Yeah, you got it. Not hanging your hat up after the one big win and calling it good? No. So you want to keep challenging yourself, huh? You got it. Will you fight lower than 155, or will 155 be your your weight? No, uh, you know, 55 is pretty difficult for me to make weight. So, uh, you know, without proper diet techniques and uh, consultation, I would never be able to make that weight even. A lot of guys that fight 170 are my size. So uh, because of the... Uh, you know, the consultation, the correct methods, you know, I'm able to actually get down to that weight, so. Got it. So you're not new to being a winner. You've done a lot of things um, over the last six years with your professional career. I know that you've, you've had some good ones. You've had a few bad ones. Unfortunately, we have to take both with being a, um, an athlete. So um, with, all my, with all my athletes, I try to coach them, uh, you, you know, using a common thread, and that includes uh, keeping that winning mentality to battle our own health and wellness um, and stay committed to focusing on the five areas that we like to coach our clients with at Nutrition Vixen. So lifestyle, diet, all of those things are important factors. So can you tell me a little bit um, about your experience working with, with Nutrition Vixen and getting you ready for this fight? How important of a role do you feel that nutrition played in your training and preparation for this competition? Oh, I mean, as far as that goes, I would say uh, it's pretty simple. You know, working with you is the best decision uh, I had made and – definitely the best single action I took for this fight camp that made really the most impact. Um, I'd say working with you has been able to help me take my game to just an entirely new level, um, you know, that I don't think would have been possible without getting kind of custom and unique programmer protocols um, that you actually built uh, personally for me. So Really, I encourage anyone who's serious about taking their fitness to, uh, you know, the highest level uh, to reach out to Heather to the Nutrition Vixen and, uh, you know, make that decision to work with you today. 
Awesome. Well, I appreciate that. So you've had a long history of having to cut weight. So from what we've discussed in the past, you were a wrestler as a child. So you had to do some pretty extreme things to cut weight. Did those principles that you learned as a young child carry over into your adulthood? And how, how was this weight cut different from what you did back then or what all of those um, habits you had developed previously? I would say the, the biggest difference I noticed was I was able to maintain higher energy levels. Um, I really did feel stronger as well as just more energized and really just I was able to maintain that strength and muscle mass. You know, I think that was the most important thing is that um, a lot of times when you cut weight, you can just cut all the muscle and um, it's really a, it's a balance of everything. So I, I feel like the biggest thing was just maintaining my strength and muscle mass and just the amount of energy I felt. I'd say that's what I definitely noticed the most. So I know that in the past, um, one of the things that you had complained to me about with cutting weight that was so difficult is that you really felt starved. You felt like you were significantly depriving yourself, which contributed to, you know, some, some mental battles in some senses that, uh, with cravings for foods. Did you experience that going through this weight loss? Cause you had a pretty significant one. We're talking, you called me and you were, I think right around 194, 95 pounds. And you said, I've got seven weeks to get down to 155. And I remember thinking, okay, well, this isn't the most ideal circumstance, but we can do it and we're going to do it the right way. So um, how, how did that have a, an effect with, with this weight loss? How did you fare with that? Um, well, it really wasn't just a diet, you know, it's, you know, it's really setting up yourself for the long-term success, you know, um, as well as keeping, you know, and maintaining my healthy habits after the fight. Mm -hmm. So it's really more of a sustainable diet than a restrictive diet, you know, yeah. um, well, I don't like to refer to it as a diet. Um, I like for people to develop lifestyle habits that are going to be sustainable. So, um, you know, I, I think a lot of times people think that in order to lose weight, all they have to focus on is exercise and their nutrition component. But what I have found with years and years of coaching, that there's a lot more that goes into losing weight and keeping weight off. Um, and more importantly, being able to maintain lean, lean muscle mass. So, so we want to keep our metabolisms wrapped up, right? So um, there's a lot more lifestyle factors than just exercise and nutrition habits. Can you talk about any of those areas that you had to make some changes in to be able to set yourself up for success with this? Yeah, so um, I think particularly, you know, you have – your eating habits, um, you know, you have your lifestyle habits and some of the things that make that up are definitely your sleep and your stress management. I think those are the two biggest ones. Absolutely. Um, as far as sleep goes, you know, if you're not getting the proper sleep, uh, your body has trouble healing, you know. Um, I'd say you do most of your, your growth in your sleep stages, you know, that's right. – you spent the day breaking down the muscle. You spend the time at night while you sleep helping rebuild that muscle. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think that's one thing that's neglected a lot is sleep. Um, so you definitely stress that with my, with my camp. Um, and a lot of the foods uh, that you helped um, kind of get me on, I, I would say were, you know, you, you would tell me at night, you know, if you have a craving, do this or do that. So that's that that was really big for me too. Okay. Another thing I think is really your stress management. Um, one thing I tell people to do is to stay away from the scale. Yes. I yeah. feel like the scale, uh, daily use of a scale. Yes. Add tremendous amounts of stress. Um, Absolutely. 
because a lot of people want instant gratification. They think, man, I worked out hard today. I should have lost five pounds. And that's right. unfortunately how it works. So yeah. I would definitely say that uh, staying away from the scale, you know, maybe weigh yourself after three months of, right. of hard work and, and diet and exercise. Right. That's when you're going to see the biggest gains. And a lot of times someone else will say something to you before you even look at the scale. They'll be like, wow, you look good. Or, Right. You, know, you drop some weight. So I'd say the, that uh, the sleep and the stress management, aside from your uh, your exercise and your diet, are very important factors that you actually helped consult me with. So I do appreciate that. And are you taking those principles into consideration now post-fight? Are you still using those methods? And how are you preparing for your next fight? Are you keeping this going? Or is it uh, something that, oh, man, I'm so glad I got through that. It's done. It's over. Back to eating pizza and candy and all of the, the normal indulgences that the average American um, eats on a regular basis. Or... Did you feel like you really adapted these lifestyle behaviors and are implementing them more than less? No, I definitely feel like I've uh, implemented them, implemented these changes as lifestyle changes and not just temporary changes. Um, but definitely after a fight, I do look forward to eating certain foods that I cut <laughs> on my diet. Uh, you know, so. So, what kind of foods did you miss the most? Uh, definitely breads. Um, even though you would have me do avocado toast with whole grain, you know, toast. So mm -hmm. I would say like, you know, I just had a collage for breakfast, which I don't really get to do. You know, it's like a <laughs> just roll. And I don't know. I definitely miss the breads, okay. um, the, the non-complex carbs, I guess you would call it. <laughs> so I Go ahead. So you, you did, a, I, one of the protocols that we had you do was a penner test. Since we needed you to drop weight pretty quickly um, in such a short time frame, I wanted to make sure that we removed majority of the obstacles that were going to stand in the way of you being able to lose that weight um, efficiently. So inflammation is one of those things that we have to take into consideration. And in order to be able to identify um, what foods potentially could be problematic for you, we had you take a Penner test. So can you tell us a little bit about your Penner test and that experience and how that played a role in your ability to lose the weight within the seven weeks that we were working with and how, um, and how you're using that information now? Yeah, so um, the pen test is really easy. It gets mailed to your house. You essentially prick your finger. It's really easy. Uh, it's not painful at all. There's no needle. Uh, but essentially, you provide a sample of your blood, and they give you results of um, different levels of intolerance with certain foods in your body. And... I was actually really unaware of this. I had heard of food allergens, uh, but an intolerance was a little different. You know, so many people get into these fad diets. Right. They just think that this fad diet's gonna work for them, but what they don't realize is that there's actually healthy foods that don't interact with your personal body uh, correctly. So for me personally, I found out that rice and eggplant, and lentils, um, and oats all are, are tough on my body. They cause inflammation and bloating, uh, joint pain. You know, it, it's amazing the amount of, of symptoms uh, that we feel every day that we don't know and realize that it's the food we're eating causing that. So that's where these fed diets really don't work. Right. Unless you know what to take out of your diet because you're intolerant to it. Right. Yeah, so, all those items that you just mentioned, those are all rather healthy foods that you know the average person thinks is good for them and so they want to try to consume them on a regular basis mm -hmm. um and, and funny enough most of those foods if you were to try to go vegan you would not be a very successful vegan because you'd have to eliminate majority of those protein type sources such as the lentils and um and whatnot so um no vegan for you right <laughs> Yeah, I need my, my animal protein. Need your animal protein. So um, 
So are you still staying away from those foods that you uh, tested tested for on the pinner test? Are you using that as a method to try and keep inflammation and body weight in check now? Yeah, I, I have. I've stayed away from those things. Uh, one thing that's hard to stay away from are the oats because they're but, in everything. Uh, yeah. But I definitely uh, watch out for any of that stuff. I, I just try to opt out of it and stay away from it. Okay, nice. I recall a certain incident when we were going through your weight loss um, phase where you called me on a Sunday and you were like, Hey man, I'm up five pounds. What the heck? And I said, I think I recall seeing something about you eating Ethiopian on a Friday night. And I asked you if you had indulged in some rice and you were like, yeah. So were you surprised that eating rice on a Friday night would cause you to be up five pounds by a Sunday? Well, it was actually, it was Afghan food. Oh, uh, my bad. Called uh, Maza Kebab. It's in Fort Collins. It's phenomenal. Uh, so it was but, worth it. <laughs> oh, it was so good. And I actually, I, I cut out a good portion of the rice, uh, but I still ate some, a good uh -huh. cup or two. But even doing that cup or two, it still, it kind of set me back a couple of days as far as my water balance and my weight so yeah. yeah just seeing the effect of what going off my diet just even for a meal you know what it does as far as setting me back a couple of days and that's where the way i am cutting weight and, and managing my diet and the exercise i do it's amazing like the effects i see from something so small you mm -hmm. know most people may not see that kind of uh you know, drastic gain, but they're, they're probably not doing it as intensely as I am. So um, it definitely proved its point uh, with the pinner test and my intolerances to certain foods. Awesome. That's great. Now your wife did the test too, is that correct? Yeah. And we found out she was intolerant to spinach, you know, and she loves spinach. She would eat it all the time and, you know, it would cause certain symptoms to her body and as soon as she took it out she really noticed some significant changes so yeah doesn't feel bloated as much anymore and right no uh, i know for females that's a big plus um because our bodies are a little bit different and if we eat something and it causes us to bloat up and feel five months pregnant we're miserable and we're going to make your life miserable right look <laughs> at that bleh, bleh whiny. So um, I know for myself, after I did my pinner test, um, I identified that wheat, let's see, wheat, dairy, and chickpeas were um, my culprits. And so I have since removed them from my diet and I've been able to, I've lost over 14 pounds, majority of it coming from inflammation and water loss, which is pretty awesome. The other day I had some uh, wheat and within a matter of 30 minutes, I was just absolutely miserable. Blew up like a balloon, had severe like cramping in my lower abdominal area and it took about three, four or five days for everything to return back to normal. So for me, it was more validation on why I have to stay away from those foods because I don't appreciate feeling like that. It's not fun, especially with it being swimsuit season right now and living in California. You need to be like beach ready at all time, right? So, so no, no hummus for you, huh? No, so I have to just, you know, modify the way that hummus is prepared. So now instead of doing it with chickpeas, chickpeas. Do black beans. I can do it with black beans. I can it's do it so with white kidney beans. Yeah. So there's other alternatives. There's always a solution. When you have to remove something, typically you can find a way to incorporate something very similar, if not even better than the original. So um, I'm not I'm not really big on depriving people and, and taking a lot of things away. I want to be able to um, have them eat as much food as they like to enjoy as long as it's, um, you know, right for their body. So um, I know that was one of the comments that you had made to me when we were going through this process is that you were really surprised at the volume of food you were eating compared yeah. to what you had done in the past. Yeah, at some points I was like, gosh, I can't eat all this, you know. 
Um, but I have to go back. My favorite hummus now is black bean hummus. Okay. And it's actually, it carries about half the calories as the chickpea hummus does. So love it. Good. And Good. is that a prepared product that you're getting or is it one that you guys are making at home? It's one that's just, it's already prepared. Um, okay. Once I finish my kitchen, we'll be able to make it at home. Speaking of which, let's talk about that. I think that's an important thing for your listeners to hear. Um, so you had a pretty significant amount of weight that you lost. You lost 38 pounds in seven weeks to be exact. So um, I know that one of the barriers I, were, I was potentially, or potentially concerned about was the fact that you were traveling four to five days a week. And when you were home, you didn't have a functional kitchen. You had very minimal things that you had access to. Mm -hmm. So how were you able to be so successful following a meal plan or, you know, I'm not real big on liking to, to call meal plans, diets or whatever, but you did it. So how, how were you able to make that happen? Um, just, you know, luckily we do, uh, you know, I have a kitchen right now. It's, uh, we just, it's not quite finished, but we have a fridge and all that. So, uh, you know, as far as making it work, you know, we just use our bathroom to wash certain dishes. And, uh, I mean, really you just stick to the diet, you know, you, so you, get, were, you were able to follow the parameters that we had, yeah. um, put together and still yeah. be able to implement that eating outside of the home. You got it. I didn't. I didn't need. Uh, I didn't need special cooking utensils or anything okay. out of the ordinary. I just uh, needed to stick with what was uh, recommended to me. So right. even traveling, I, you know, I did a lot of traveling. I was able to stick to it. I feel like that's a lot of, you know, working with clients, I often hear, oh, right now the time's not right because I've got this, this, and this going on in my life. And when I get that taken care of, then I'll start thinking about taking care of myself and making health and wellness priority. And I like to tell people all the time, there's never a perfect time. You're a perfect example of that. You know, you were traveling four to five days a week. You didn't have an ideal kitchen at home and you were still able to lose 38 pounds within seven weeks, which is phenomenal. I, I, I commend you on the efforts. Um, you made it seem absolutely effortless. You really, really uh, took, took the recommendations and ran with them. And um, anytime you did encounter a little road bump, you know, we touched base, we, we ironed that out and you were back and running with uh, no issues. So I have to commend you on all your efforts and your, your devotion to make that happen. Yeah. So, really with your diet and with your, you know, food recommendations, there's really no excuse, you know, so I was able to accommodate whether I had to eat out. Um, I did meal prep a lot, but, um, there's really no excuse. Um, because right. like you said you don't make a restrictive diet, uh, you more try to implement the right substitutions and things like that. So right. um, I was able to pull it off, no problem. I'm proud of you. You definitely made me one happy coach and it was really exciting to be there and, and watch it all go down so quickly. I was mentally prepared for a much longer fight. I, I, I was my, my cortisol levels were thanking you greatly after ending it in 24 seconds, so I didn't have to endure more anxiety for the sustained period. Yeah, mine too. And if you if you miss the fight, um, they're going to be playing it on Spike TV. Really? On July 28th. Okay. Uh, at uh, 8 p.m. Central. Awesome, Spike July TV. 28th, July 28th, 8 p.m. Central time uh, on Excellent. Spike TV. Awesome. Well, I know that our listeners are going to be really excited to hear that. Um, I know for myself, I definitely want to watch it from that view because being there in the moment, it was just, it was like, whew, you know, so awesome. That's really exciting. I'm really proud of you. So last question I have for you today is one that I think the audience would love to hear about. Looking back over all your successes you created with your health and fitness over the last several years, 
Um, what is the one thing that you felt has made the most impact on your ability to be successful with losing weight and being prepared to fight these championship fights? Um, I feel like I might have answered that earlier. Again, it's pretty simple. Um, I feel like, you know, having consulted with you is one of the best decisions I've made. Oh, well, I'm flattered. Yeah, really, it, it made a huge impact. Um, I'd say working with you is, again, it's taken my game to a new level. Um, and I don't think that would have been possible without, you know, getting the custom uh, getting the custom plan that you were able to lay out for me. Um, I, I, again, I encourage anyone who's serious about taking their fitness to kind of the next level. Um, I'd, I'd recommend reaching out to, to Heather Duranja, the nutrition vixen. Um, well, I, I, would, I would definitely say that that's what I was missing in my regime it was, was really nailing down my diet. Um, once I did that, I just, I, I did, I felt like I was at a new level. So I've, I've gotten to know you a little bit and I know that, you know, one of your personality characteristics is you're a pretty strong headed individual. So how was it having to take um, advice from me and being able to implement that without you being biased? Was it something that you struggled with or was it pretty easy to do with the coaching that we um, developed? I would say it was, uh, it was easy. It wasn't, it wasn't any crazy changes, you know. Um, I enjoyed my breakfast every day. I enjoyed my lunch. I, I actually realized that once I started to implement a lot of these changes, I was actually craving the stuff I was eating. Um, it's almost like, uh, you know, the sugars and those things, the processed foods, it's almost like they, it's almost like they kind of put a veil over your eyes and they make you crave these things. Right. It doesn't actually make you feel good. You know, right. so once you start feeling better and eating those healthier foods, you actually start craving those foods. Absolutely. So no, I wouldn't say it was difficult. I think say. one thing probably a lot of people don't know, and which is one reason why I focus really um, strongly on digestive health, is that 95% of our serotonin is produced in our digestive tract. Only 5% is, is produced in our brain. So when we think about the mind-body connection and mood, um, there's a significant role that the food that we're putting into our body is playing a role in how we feel and how we um, maintain our, our mood levels throughout the day. So did you notice that with all of the mental stress that you had for preparing for this fight, did you feel that the nutrition was playing any kind of role in helping to improve your state of mind? Oh, no doubt. Um, you know, I feel like, I feel like when you really want to be mentally prepared, you have to pull everything together. You can't do certain things and not do other things. So I definitely feel like, you know, working out and working my hardest, but also dieting, my healthiest and and been really sticking to the protocol um, I feel like that gave me that mental edge you know whenever whenever you do things right you feel right about it so I, I would say that I was ready I was focused to win that fight um, awesome and I would you, say, you put on one heck of a show it was fabulous we are so proud of you i know all your fans are proud of you um it was really exciting to get to celebrate that moment and watch you win you were just glorious you were so poised up there all of your interviews have just been so impressive you're really a, a top top class act zach freeman um very very impressed I'm very honored to have had the opportunity to work with you and help assist with your efforts and being a championship and, and making your debut in Bellator at Madison Square Garden and walking away with not only a win, but a historical win. So that's pretty exciting. Um, again, I appreciate your time. I know you're a really, really busy guy and it was hard to get you scheduled to do this interview, but I thought it was important that the listeners could hear firsthand from you um, how you were able to lose that 38 pounds in such a short time 
and how, how you felt. How did it make you feel? How did it help, help assist your win? So you guys, we've heard it directly from Zach, the altar boy Freeman. If you want to be the best possible you, a winner, a champion like Zach Freeman, uh, click the link below to get started today. Um, there's only a number amount of people that I will be working with. I feel it's really important to take on a limited amount of clients so that I can give everyone the attention that is needed so that they can be their best um, because things come up and you know um, it's important to have that that direct line of communication and I'm I really focus on building that relationship with my clients and becoming part of the family in a sense um, their go-to go-to person when they're not sure about something yeah, so anyway, I think um, one, thing, one thing I want to add I think it was really neat how you were able to you know to implement all this and work with me all the way from California and I live in Good San Francisco. Point. So I think the fact that your program can work um, across the country, across the world, uh, I think that's something to be said. So. Well, thank you. I definitely appreciate that. And I do think that that does keep a lot of people from considering working with me. They find out, oh, you're in California. Oh, well, how does that work? But I feel like I've developed a system that's pretty, pretty flawless when technology wants to work. Um, that makes it definitely something that's doable and work for all. So, anyway, so I appreciate you pointing that out. Thank you. Yeah. All right. So everyone, make sure they grab their spot today by clicking below the video. There's a link that you can click on to get your um, metabolism secret document and also to uh, take advantage of this temporary um, promotion that I have going for anyone interested in getting their elite athletic composition ready to go. So any words of wisdom, any last minute thoughts for the listeners, anything coming up? Um, I'm going to say stay away from the scale and work hard. I love it. I love it. All right. Well, thank you so much, Zach. We really appreciate your time. Keep kicking butt and taking names. It was, it's really been a pleasure and I look forward to continuing to work with you for your next fight. All right. I'll let you know as soon as we're scheduled. Awesome. Well, we'll be waiting patiently. All right. Yeah. Patiently. All right. But give me more than seven weeks this time. All right. We'll see what we can really do. All right, thanks.